Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, my name is Steph. And in today's video, I thought that I would discuss my thoughts and opinions on Voyager by Joanna Gabaldon, which is the third book in the Outlander series. If you haven't read books one, two, or this book, book three, yet, I would recommend you watch this video, obviously for spoilery kind of reasons. And I want to kind of make this video shorter, and in order to do that, there might be some sort of spoilery things. So there won't be a sort of um, clean cut, spoiler free section. So if you don't want to be spoiled for it, please click off this video now. But thank you for clicking on it to begin with. So for everyone else, I'm just going to make a very short kind of disclaimer that's not very short. I am a massive fan of the show, and I want more than anything to love this book and this book series as much as I love the show. Please don't feel offended because I didn't gel with it as much as you may have. In no way, shape or form am I attacking the author or her works. And I should also mention that from here on out, I am flying blind in this series. I have not yet watched season three of the show. And um, obviously I'm up to kind of date with where the books and show are kind of going but um, I'm very behind obviously on what books are published I'm almost halfway through well I'm not even almost halfway through anymore so yes I have no idea from here on out what is happening in either media oh lordy here we go so we open up with Claire prepping for her journey back to Jamie and she's settling all her affairs she's getting her ducks all in a row she's getting her house in order then she travels back in time back to Jamie and it is all guns blazing because at this point we had already found out in the end of book two that Jamie was still alive and this is where it very quickly started to go downhill for me. Characters that I love so very much, I'm looking at you Jenny, had turned heel. Suddenly everyone is questioning Claire and her motives and her reason for coming back. And everyone's back to calling her a witch again, even though no one is being truthful to her. And yes, I know you're going to say, Steph, you're an idiot. Just like she had every right to try and repair her relationship with Frank the Dub. Jamie had an equal right to attempt to move on, but I am sorry. You literally, literally metaphor you metaphorically force your wife to travel through a stone to get her to go back to her ex-husband. Like she was fine with not going, and then you convinced her just to do it. You made that decision for her, and stop forcing her into things. If you are ballsy enough to literally never see your wife or your unborn child ever again, you can tell Jenny the jackass to mind her own business. And again, it, it, by the same turn, it just felt so unrealistic to me that Claire, who was in the beginning, she was happy enough and convinced enough to be able to leave Jamie to raise their child together on the other side but now all of a sudden she's a young woman and she's old enough and she's not going to miss her enough or care about her enough so she can just travel back and just leave her kid there in the future just to abandon her as a young woman that completely felt off and out of character and the justification just wasn't right for me and then we also have to witness Jamie sexually assaulting his son's mother no means no you can't just say, oh, I'm here, you wanted this, and you have no right to change your mind now. Dude, why aren't people mentioning this? Why aren't they talking about Jamie doing this? And obviously, I'm also going to say, as I said at the start of this video, I haven't watched season three yet. So I don't know how that is conducted in terms of the show, because I know from books one and books two, Jamie is a lot nicer in the show and they took out some more problematic troublesome kind of things that would have made the fangirls of the show unhappy about Jamie so I don't know how that is going to be carried out and how that's reflected in season three I don't know I can't comment on that but and even Leary like what even are you yes I understand that 300 years ago in order for a woman to provide a widowed woman to have to provide for her children she would have had to have married another man but this this is way past the parameters of the crazy versus bombshell standard curve why are you literally married to the woman who tried to have your wife the love of your life killed I propose a new axis for this curve 
on the z-axis we should quantify how desperate a guy aka Jamie really is. From now on I shall refer to it as the how desperate is Jamie to fill the void that he created himself landscape. That's how strongly I feel about this. And also, this book is shelved in the science fiction genre. Back off the romance just a little, please. I'm so bored of the universe, plotting against them and trying to tear them apart. If they are such big believers in fate, why are they trying to force two samely charged magnets together if it's just not gonna work? The secrecy dynamic just got too tiresome for me and I had to put the book down. For days or a week at a time just because I couldn't proceed any further in the story and I'm 1 billion 400 million 355,750 times infinity behind the movement to have more people of color in books and other forms of media or entertainment but please if you're going to do it educate yourself on how to write these characters so you're not making disturbingly racist descriptions and satirizations about these characters and trying to describe what race they're part of or what color their skin looks like or the way they talk or the way they dress. This woman, Diana Gabaldon, has a PhD. I'm pretty sure it's a PhD in botany, which means she has had to practice sci writing, not even just psychom, but writing for years to get to that level. And I cannot fathom I cannot understand how everyone in the booktube and bookstagram and tumblr community just shills this series and isn't acknowledging his problems. Did this book even go through the editing floor is another question I have because so drawn out and lengthy honestly that's as far as the book needed to go. The rest of that was just fluff that was not necessary not if for no other reason than just to fill a few more pages for a book that was so slow the twist twist ending was so abrupt it was almost like it was half plotted and then she's just turned around and gone oh look it's already so long i can't be bothered with it anymore my due date is coming around the corner meh i need the characters to be here for the start of the next book so whoop it just felt like the biggest afterthought. I don't mind if you're going to make me really have to dredge through a lot of pages and then you're slowly going to reveal things to me and set things up because I know obviously it's a very lengthy series. I'm not denying that. But if that's the route you're going to go, don't just be like, okay, so this is you catching up to where, you know, uh, you're getting back to your husband. This is you dealing with, you know, all the problems and, Acknowledging the fact that you're no longer in your 20s and you know early 30s and you have different things to worry about in your relationship now and things have changed between the two of you and you need to reflect that because you haven't seen each other in so long and then oh my god obviously there's a conflict that's going to arise with all of this and then obviously you know we need to deal with that conflict and then okay so we need to set up another conflict that's going to be set that to set up for the remainder of the books or the next book in the series or whatnot right but don't dredge on about nothing and then be like oh here's a paragraph and a half about the end so yes i just couldn't get through it i ended up giving it two stars i copped a lot of flack for it when i posted my review and Again, I said this in earlier books that I reviewed in this series actually before. I don't mind if people have different, different, differing, sorry. I don't mind if people have differing views and opinions and things they want to discuss with me about books because at the end of the day, that's why we're making these videos, why we're posting these reviews, why we're making these blogs and all that kind of thing. But do not say that I just don't get it. But do not come for me just because I have a different view than you. And you're, as much as you're, I'm entitled to my view and my opinion and the way I analyze something is the exact same way that you're entitled to it. So I'm not going to come for you and say, oh my God, you're stupid, you don't get it. But then don't come to me. I'm not saying any of you guys are doing that. But it was just insane. And I had to block a lot of people. I don't get it and then people are telling me well why are you reading it because i love the show so yes i will be reading the rest of the series one because i really really loved 
I really, really loved it when I got into it when I first watched the show, and book one was great. It wasn't fantastic, it wasn't out of this world, but I did really enjoy it. And then I stupidly, at the same time, bought all the books in the whole series. I think for maybe, I didn't, the only one I still don't have is Echo in the Bone, because I was, I kept saying to myself, oh my god, when I get to that book, I'll just buy it when I get up to it. So that's the only one in the series that I do not currently own yet. And also because I need my love for the show to reflect in the books. I need to know where the train, what station this train finally stops at and how it's all going to tie together. I know you're going to say, Steph, you're less than halfway through this series. I know, but I do really, really like Brianna as a, I really love Brianna as a character. So I'm hoping that the Jamie and Claire sort of stuff really ties up and that it becomes more Brianna focused. That's what I'm really, really interested in. And that's what I'm really kind of hanging out for at the moment. So I will leave it here for you guys. Please be sure to let me know your thoughts, opinions in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought. Did you share, share the same views as me? Did I kind of forget anything in my recap? Did I just misinterpret it or did you feel the same way about it? So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend, that you're going to have a great week and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.